נמצא איתנו זוהר הלחמי, מייסד, שותף ומנכ"ל בחברת Different Solutions, איש ניהול מנוסה ויזם סדרתי, עם הצלחות בבנייה, הובלה וניהול של חברות רב-תחומיות גלובליות שצומחות במהירות. לפני Different Solutions, זוהר הלחמי ייסד וניהל מספר סטארט-אפים בתחומים שונים ומילא תפקידי ניהול בחברות גלובליות שנסחרות גם בנסדק. זוהר הוא בעל תואר SCB מהטכניון ו-SCM מאוניברסיטת תל אביב, שניהם בהצטיינות, ושימש מרצה גם במוסדות האלה. Hello, my name is Zohar Alachmi, and I'm the chairman and CEO of Defense Solutions. Uh, we are the leading provider of country drone solution uh, for complex, sensitive and challenging environments. And uh, what I mean by sensitive environments, I mean locations like urban environments, um, airports and, uh, and environments as such. Um, quickly about Defend before I'm going to go and speak a little bit about the, the um, area itself. Um, we are deployed in over 100 locations. We were chosen by the DOD, DOJ and DHS in the US. Um, and we are being deployed right now uh, in many, many airports worldwide with over dozens uh, of installations worldwide in airports. Um, before I'm going to start to elaborate about us, let me just elaborate a little bit about the different needs and verticals and where we see this kind of need for counter drone solutions. So what you see over there are different examples for verticals and scenarios where drones actually uh, interrupting. So uh, on the upper left side, we have uh, Gatwick, uh, Gatwick and Heathrow airports where uh, this kind of incidents happened in 2018 and shut down the airports for 72 hours. On the um, upper right side, that's a prison in London, a CCTV, CCTV camera from a prison in London. And right now drones are the most effective way and the populated way um, to smuggle uh, narcotics, mobile devices, and weapons into prisons. Um, the White House is what you see on the lower left side, and a football match between Serbia and Albania where just a drone with a flag caused to uh, uh, stop this game and interruption in the game itself. Another example, um, upper right side, you see uh, Shinzo Abe, the Prime Minister of uh, uh, Japan, and that's a drone that was suspected to be a radioactive that landed on, uh, on, the, on the rooftop over there. Um, ISIS, and that's the uh, upper left side, are using drones as well um, against all type of coalitions. Um, many questions about what's going to happen to a plane if a drone is going to bump into that. And that's what you see on the uh, lower right side. Uh, and at the end, nuclear plant in France. If I try to uh, summarize, all of these incidents actually were generated by two types of drones. Either commercial drones, meaning drones that you can buy at Amazon or eBay or in the stores, or DIY drones, which are based and built of off-the-shelf components. Nobody really develops right now drones. Nobody needs to develop a drone. They just need to buy that over the internet. Um, and if we look right now at the different technologies which are being used against drones, um, we can divide it into detection and mitigation. In detection, at the end, we can um, group all of them into four different buckets. Uh, so we have radar-based solutions, optical solutions, directional finders solutions, and acoustic solutions. Uh, these are great solutions which uh, were being used for many, many years in rural environments were developed specifically for military type of purposes. But when you try and bring those into urban environments and sensitive environments, uh, these solutions usually get themselves blind. They confuse between birds and drones. Uh, they don't have a clear line of sight to the flying object, meaning to the bird. And what they get is actually just uh, uh, not efficient enough, and in many cases, totally blind. blind. Um, when we speak about mitigation, uh, at the end, again, we have two type of groups. Um, kinetic solutions, everything that runs very fast and make a boom at the end, and jammers, radio jammers, GPS jammers, GPS poofers, and so on. And again, when you try and use those in urban and sensitive environments, 
Think about an airport where you're going to have a GPS uh, a spoofer walking over there. Or what's going to happen if you're going to activate a GPS uh, jammer inside uh, Tokyo or New York or any other place. Bottom line, uh, it interrupts the different signals that we have over there. And the collateral damage which happens from these kinetic solutions is, is really dangerous. And that's what makes us unique. We developed the capability to identify the communication between the drone and the remote control. And by doing that, we actually can tell you, look, there is a drone over here, and that's the detection part. Then we know how to uh, penetrate into this kind of uh, communication and take control over the bird. And I really mean take control over the drone itself. So we have an autonomous solution uh, which knows how to create a dome over a region detect all the drones in that region and take control over the bird. And I really mean take control over the drone and land the drone safely in a predefined designated safe zone defined by the end user. Now, it's not just important to understand what we do, it's also important to understand what we do not do. And what we do not do, uh, we do not jam, we have nothing kinetic in our solution, and we do not require line of sight to the drone itself or to the operator. That makes us perfect in these kind of situations and in these kinds of locations. So if, again, I'll try to uh, summarize very quickly what we do over there. So first, we detect the drone. We identify the communication between the drone and the remote control, and then we know there is a drone over here. Then we penetrate into this communication and we know to read all the information running over there so we can generate information like where the drone is, uh, what the drone sees and all of that. Everything is passive. Once we do that, we can identify and have a full IFF, identification friend of four capability. So we can differentiate between the drone and, uh, I mean the friendly drones and the hostile ones. And once we do that, we can generate an additional information such as where the drone pilot, for example, is. And everything up till now was done passively. The next step is going to be how to mitigate or what to do with this kind of hostile drone. And on that part, what we know is to take control over the drone and land it safely. All of that is being done without any collateral damage or effect on any friendly communication in that neighborhood. And again, everything I just mentioned is already deployed in hundreds of locations worldwide. Um, what type of drones do we cover? So at the end, we can differentiate these drones into three categories. The first one and the most important one to focus on are the high endurance drones. These are drones that can actually fly five kilometers and even longer than that from the remote control. They can fly in any weather conditions and they can carry payload on them, which is a great payload. I mean, in terms of kilograms, it can be up to five, seven, and even more than that. The other category, DIY drones, drones that people just build by themselves. And again, that's the, the type of drone that we are focusing as well. And the last one are the toy drones, Wi-Fi based drones, which we cover as well. So that's what we address, but what we focus on, and that's what really makes us unique, is the ability to focus on the threat, on those drones which are considered to be the one that we need to protect us from. Drones that, again, can have a payload of up to 12 kilograms, fly five and even more kilometers from the remote control, have a different type of protocols, and all of them, by the way, right now are already encrypted. Um, and that's the one that we need to, uh, to protect ourselves from. And that's what makes us unique, the ability to focus on the real threat. Um, we have different type of flexibility or operational flexibility and deployment options over there. Um, and if I'll try to uh, very quickly just review that. So first, of course, it's a military standard solution. Um, and it fits to any kind of weather and conditions. Um, we have a tactical type of deployments, which can move from a tripod to a vehicle and back to a tripod. Um, it takes less than one minute to move from one deployment to the other. Again, 60 seconds. And in, within 60 seconds, 
all this kind of deployment can go from the vehicle to tripod and going back. Um, we also have a tactical deployment which fits urban environments and high location type of deployments. And that as well can go and be a, a on, deployed on a vehicle. And then what we have is a covert type of, uh, of deployment. Uh, and that's what we have over there. Another one are stationary deployments. These are the deployment that fits airports. I will show it in a second how it's uh, being deployed. But we have directional antenna on one hand and omnidirectional stationary deployment on the other. So if we try to take all of these kind of um, antennas and deployments and see how it really works on real life deployments, that's what we have over here. So we create a bubble. Um, and the bubble in urban environment looks like that. Um, and that's one type of deployment. Another one is the same kind of bubble, but right now in military deployments. And that's an airport type of deployment where we used actually a combination of omnidirectional sensors. That's the one that created the bubble uh, above the terminal, for example, and the directional one, which, cover, which covers all the uh, corridors of the, of the airplanes themselves. Um, and then we have critical infrastructure deployments. Think about nuclear plants. That's what we offer over there. Um, border deployments, where we cover the borders and enables that to be on a vehicle deployment as well and have this kind of uh, 360 omnidirectional antenna moving with a vehicle. And the last time, and the last one, maritime deployment uh, on ships. Uh, used for coast guards and deployments like that. And of course, ships that are um, in other locations. Um, I'll try to summarize all of that. So again, what really makes us unique and what we bring. Uh, the first thing is the ability to control the drone, the ability to control the threat, the ability to control all the environment, and actually by that, bringing the ability to have a safe solution. It's a safe landing, safe route of the drone itself to the safe landing. And at the end, what we have is the ability to differentiate uh, between the hostile ones and the friendly ones. And by doing that, enable the friendly one to continue using and flying in the neighborhood uh, versus the one that needs to be uh, taken and uh, landed. And then we focus on the real threat. We do not just offer something that uh, focus on or not the real one, that the real threat, that's what makes us unique. And the ability to release uh, frequently updates, which enables us to actually uh, provide continuous type of support and uh, security for those who are using our solutions. Um, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy.